Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. And welcome, beloved in Christ, welcome to North Lake on this Sunday just prior to Thanksgiving. It's good to be together. We welcome you also if you're worshiping with us today by live stream or online with a video. Glad to share together with you in this service of worship. Most every week I'm in uh, quite a few meetings, including in today's world, quite a few on Zoom. And one of the meetings I was in this week was with clergy friends from around the country, a national covenant group that I'm a part of. And one of the ones on the screen, one of the pastors mentioned that in their community, they're allowed to have only um, six people for Thanksgiving in private homes. Wow. Another had, had heard that, and, and, and he went on to say that uh, there were, it, it's remarkable because they are allowing 30 people to attend funerals in that same community. And so he came up with a novel idea. He says, now I'm just going to invite all my family to come for the funeral of my turkey. <laughs> okay, I know it's not all that great, but we have to maintain some sense of humor. And I do understand that there is nothing at all funny about COVID-19 itself. Nothing. And in fact, at Northlake, uh, we are trying to be as vigilant and clear and consistent as we can be in response to it. Oh, you can bet that your pastoral staff and leadership team is well aware of the spectrum of views we have in our country on the, the nature and the handling of the pandemic, as, as well as looking at how are we free in a time when we face such a threat. But we're trying to say, even now, as we're hearing such promising news about the vaccines and even more treatment protocols, we're trying to say, look, Let's not ease up now. Let's be as vigilant as ever, as we've been for eight plus months. We're going to get through this together. We are. But we don't want to lose anyone in the process. So we're being very consistent and clear in what we're saying. And, you know, we went through a lot of effort to get back onto campus with worship and also to create the live stream and the online worship opportunity simultaneously. And so I continue to say that when you are here with us on campus, please do as asked, maintain the social distance, wearing masks. And we do ask that you'd wear the mask over both the mouth and nose so that it's on as, as it's prescribed to be. All right, I just saw a couple adjusting in. Look, we're not picking on anyone, we're just trying to be clear and consistent so we can do this well because we're all seeing the numbers rising uh, around the country and, and even in our own area. So we're glad we can be together. Let's do it well. And thanks be to God that we can worship. Do you know Advent begins next Sunday? Advent is, is the four-week preparation or time of waiting for Christmas. Advent means literally coming or arrival. And so it's a, a time of, of getting ready, of anticipation, preparation for the celebration of God coming into the world. A couple things I'd like for you to be aware of as we approach Advent. Number one, starting next Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent, if you are on our email list, our congregational email, you will begin to receive a daily Advent devotional something that has been specifically written by North Lake folks for this year, all authored by people that sit next to you or in one of the other services. And, and these are things that have been written about our theme for Advent. What's our theme? Our theme this year for Advent is the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight the hopes and fears. And so we uh, will have that devotional coming out to every one of you if you're on our email list. If you're not on the email, you can let the office know if you'd like to be added. We'll be glad to add you. Or you can read it online at the website. Second, this year 
as we've done in prior years, we will have a North Lake angel tree. And it will be out in the lobby next Sunday, so you'll know it and anticipate it. And this will be an opportunity to fill a, or to fill a wish or a hope for a child in our community, including some who are involved with the Little Blessings Preschool right across the, the drive, driveway. And if you want to go shopping and you're comfortable going out and doing that on your own, you'll have the opportunity. You can choose to do that. But we'll also offer an option online, so you can do it either way. You can shop if you're comfortable going somewhere to do it, or you can accomplish it, the same thing online. And both options will be there for the North Lake Angel Tree. And that'll be the next couple of weeks so that they're back and ready to go to families, households in our area, uh, well in advance of Christmas. Third, every year, North Lake does a service of remembrance. This year, again, we will be doing that on Thursday, December 3rd, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, here in the sanctuary. Many of you have already submitted names of persons whom you want to remember. Those names will be read, a candle will be lit for each, and it will be a time of, of prayer and reflection, remembrance, and also of hope, the hope that we have in Christ. In life and in death, we belong to him. So a service of hope and remembrance. And then finally, I want to make sure you know we're doing something very different. This is such a peculiar year. We've been thinking, well, what can we do that's going to be safe and yet really um, contains the message of hope? And so hope comes alive will be a, a lighted drive through in our parking lot that will occur on the second weekend of the month of December. It'll be the 11th and 12th, Friday and Saturday evenings from 5 until 7.30 p.m. And you'll be able to drive through, weave back and forth, and there'll be obviously lighted scenes, a nativity, um, Christmas music, and, uh, and this is a way to deliver a message of hope. And frankly, it's, it's for all of you as North Lakers, but it's, it's for the community. Beginning this weekend, 20,000 postcards of invitation are going out to our vicinity so that we are inviting our neighbors to come and to share in the hope that comes alive in Christ. And you can invite your family and friends and neighbors to, to come, but we hope you'll be a part of it as well. The hopes and fears of all the years converge. Thanks be to God for what he offers us in Christ. Now we have an opening prayer, and we've been doing that routinely. Today's opening prayer includes also the dedication of the shoe boxes that you can see in front of you. No, I'm teasing you, they're not here. But they have been in years past. In years past, we'd have them all stacked up here. You'd see hundreds of them stacked up here and over in the other, the other worship space. And of course, we've done it very differently this year, uh, online, and uh, approximately 400 boxes from North Lake to go to children around the world. So picture them up here, <laughs> picture them as we pray. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We praise you. We give thanks to you because you are good and your steadfast love endures forever. And that prompts our worship. It also stirs us to want to give your love away, to share it with others. And so we pray for Operation Christmas Child and the organization that coordinates its Samaritan's Purse. We pray for all the boxes that each and every one will arrive in the hands of a child and in a family where you have intended it. And that those children will not only be delighted and, and joyous as they open up a box and see what it contains, but also that they would understand they are receiving your message, that you care for them, that you love them and that you send Jesus into the world for each and every one of us. So we pray your blessing upon all the boxes that are distributed around the world and in our own country and community. May your word reach each heart and hope come alive 
And so we pray in the name of the one who embodies that best, who is the incarnation, the Word made flesh. We pray in Jesus' name as we come to worship you. Amen. Well, thank you so much. I think that that song has been a part of my Thanksgiving. You know, right from the time I was a little, little kid, I can remember singing that in church, and it's probably been part of every Thanksgiving service I've ever been to. So, so thank you so much. You kindled up a lot of good memories for me. It's time for us to quiet our hearts, quiet our minds, and realize that this is the time God has set aside in this service for us just to come to him just as we are with all the stuff that's in our hearts and minds. And we believe that he listens and that he answers. And because it's Thanksgiving Day coming up, that's what the prayers are going to center in on. So uh, join me in going to God in prayer. O oh Lord, you are our light in our salvation. Whom shall we fear? You are the stronghold of our lives. Of whom shall we be afraid? You are sovereign. All things in all circumstances are in your hands. You are the creator, the sustainer. We rest in you. But we confess, dear Lord, that we are not always as thankful as we should be. We take the many blessings you give us sometimes for granted. And we come to Thanksgiving Day and realize that we should thank you more. Help us to thank you more. You work all things for our good, even things that we do not understand. We do not understand COVID-19. And still you give us abiding trust in you. Thank you. Crush this virus. Kill it. We do not understand the divisiveness in our country. And still, 
You give us abiding trust in you. Thank you. We wake up in the morning or in the middle of the night and our souls cry out. Doubts can gnaw away at the back of our minds. People we love fall and are seriously injured. Our husband or wife suffers dementia and there seems little we can do for them for they no longer remember our name. Cancer comes, slipping in under the radar. Our children no longer seem to know you. In all of this, you are with us, and you help us to trust you again and again and again. Thank you. We see you working. Vaccines and therapeutics are being developed. Thank you. Many of us will not see our families this, this Thanksgiving, and you have given us FaceTime and Zoom and Skype. Thank you. We experience despair, and you give us hope. Thank you. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our pastors and staff our elders and deacons and circle leaders and ministry leaders. Thank you for the food pantry and homebound and little blessings. Oh Lord, send the church in our country, including our own church. Give us the power of the Holy Spirit and send us revival now help us to remember the words, return to you. Oh God, enable us to return to you. Give us a, a growing faith, a stronger faith. We, we surrender our lives to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for coming to this planet and becoming one of us. For paying for all our sins on the cross. For rising from the dead for returning to heaven and being glorified, for pouring out your Holy Spirit. Thank you that one day you will come back to set up your never-ending kingdom on this planet. Thank you, Jesus. And now we pray as our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Our gospel reading today is Jesus cleansing the lepers, which is one of his miracles. And when Jesus performs a miracle, I like to look to see what the miracle is behind the miracle. And there is one in today's gospel reading. Ten leopards. Jesus cleanses t- ten leopards. But only one of them goes back and gives thanks. And Jesus cleansed ten, knowing that only one would go back and thank him. So please rise as I share with you Luke 17, 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten leopards approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Now none of them found to return and gave praise to God except this foreigner. Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Lynn read scripture that describes the cleansing of ten lepers. Back in biblical times, in order for a leper to be accepted as being healed, he had to go and show himself to the priests, and that was their responsibility. Those lepers cried out for Jesus to heal them. And so he sent them to the priests. Ten of them were made well. One came back and thanked Jesus. And Jesus said to that one, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. It's never too late to thank God. In my development as a man of God, I knew that I needed help in learning how to thank him. And in that journey, I was taught, why didn't I thank God for 10 ways that I saw him involved in my yesterday? I know you find this hard to believe, But I was young when I started this motion, and I was a jogger. Can you believe that? (laughs) I I ran six miles five days a week. I would take one of those miles, and I would thank God for ten ways that I saw him involved in my yesterday. Now, when I first started, I couldn't get to two. My wife exclaimed, I don't know how you expected to do any better. You're the most negative person I've ever known. That's encouragement for a minister of word and sacrament, right? But nonetheless, I was giving it a whirl, and today I want to share with you 
10 ways that God was involved in my yesterday. My son-in-law is directs air shows and it is an exciting thing that he does. This weekend he directed the air show in Fort Lauderdale. He has plenty of stories. He's coming to visit me over Thanksgiving and I'm going to hear plenty of stories. Yesterday I had time to do sermon preparation. It's not always as easy as you think to have time to do that. But yesterday was very smooth and I was grateful and thankful to God for it. My wife is named Pam and she has a sister named Ellen Gale. I knew Ellen, <clears throat> hello. I knew Ellen Gale before she was known as Ellen. I'm the only person on the planet that calls her Ellen Gale. And she retired after 40 years as a nurse in a doctor's office. And they wanted to share that with us, and that was fun. I have a golf cart. How do you live in the villages without a golf cart? But I never knew a golf cart was so cool. So I had time yesterday late to get in my golf cart and ride around the golf course that's close to where I live. It was wonderful. I am a University of South Carolina Gamecock. And I've had a rough week. We fired our coach and we replaced him with an interim and his name is Bobo. It's, it's bad enough being a Gamecock. Coached by Bobo. Okay. And just to follow suit, we also lost yesterday. Even with Bobo. My son-in-law is an Oklahoma State cowboy. He refers that I refer to him as Poke, cow poke. I can't do it. He also lost yesterday to Oklahoma in a big game, and he texted me this morning and said, just like the Gamecocks. Oh. <laughs> yesterday, my wife said, what would you like to eat today? Every time she says that, I smile. I love to eat. She bought me wings. I love wings. And so yesterday in my sermon prep, I'm eating wings. I don't know if that's right, but that's the truth. Yesterday, Pam and I had a great talk. It's always dangerous to have a great talk with me. <laughs> I, I can be rather intimidating even to my wife. But nonetheless, it was great. We covered a lot of miles. Thursday is Thanksgiving. When I grew up in Columbia, South Carolina, every Thanksgiving, we would go to church at 11 o'clock, then come home for a meal with family. Churches, for the most part, don't do that anymore. They don't have a service on Thanksgiving Day. And I miss that. It was important to me in my upbringing. We are, uh, in my family now, when I left my family of origin, Pam and I came up with a Thanksgiving tradition that whoever was eating with us the Thanksgiving meal, we would take a number one, two, three, four, five, however many people were there. If you got the number one, we said everybody around the table would say one thing they liked about you. 
and then you would say one thing you were thankful to God for. When our kids got into college and were bringing their friends home, the number that they would bring year after year was always more because their friends told about the game and they all wanted to be number one. And then some of them, when we'd go around the circle and share one thing that we liked about them, they say, well, why not just do two? Say two things you like about me. That broke the rules, we didn't do it. It's always time to thank God for his blessings. The psalmist says, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. The psalmist says, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. The psalmist says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. But all of life doesn't fit neatly into categories called blessings. There's a host of other things that tumble our way with blessings. Problems. There's not one of you in here that's going to sit around the table at Thanksgiving and not have problems. We all have them. Some of them are more serious than others, but we have problems. Are we going to thank God for those? Do you thank God that he puts things in your life that make you stretch and grow? Do you thank God that he has created the life that you have and has enabled his love and direction to deal with your problems? Some of us will have reversals. That things that were set in our life yesterday won't be set in our life tomorrow. And we've got to deal with it. It's harder to deal with it when we keep having birthdays. We want things to settle down. We don't want reversals. We want some things to say constant. Things we can count on to be true. Some of us will be burdened. We have people in our lives that are going through difficult times and we love them. But in order to deal with them, some of what they give us are burdens to carry for the other person. We don't have any perfect people in this church. So we all fail. Do you thank God when you fail? You see, God teaches a lot when we fail. Pastor Jeff and I and many of you were athletes. No team that I played on was undefeated. You? No. So when you don't win every time, do you believe that God has something to teach you when you fail? Do you believe that his love can come underneath you and pick you up? All of us have, have heartaches. If we've had children, we've had a broken heart, right? What do you do with that? When we have a broken heart, it humbles us. And God can bless us when we're humbled, when we're quiet. If we're able to sift and strain the abrasive stuff of life, it comes back faster than the Thursday turkey turns in to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday sandwiches with tomatoes. 
My question this Thanksgiving is must I separate the good from the bad? Must I be thankful for the good in my life and postpone the bad until after Thanksgiving? This morning, I want you to come with me to the outer limits of thanksgiving. Hear these words. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophet, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who called you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here is one outer limit of thanksgiving. Give thanks in all circumstances because it's the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Paul says it boils down to this. Be thankful in every situation because the Lord is with you. We are charged to be thankful for everything that happens in life. Be thankful for the good. Be thankful for the bad. For you see, life is not just a life of good without the bad. So we have to figure out, is God giving us the bad to punish us? And the answer is no, that he's not. But he knows in order to be the godly man, woman, boy, or girl that you were have been created to be. You've got to learn how to thank God for the bad things that come your way and leave an open door for him to teach you how to be a godly person. We need to thank God when we're joyful and when we're in pain. We need to thank God for our blessings and our burdens. I want to share with you my experience in all of this. Many of us cling to Romans 8.28. We know that in all things God works out for his good of those who love him and have been called calling to his purpose. I take that to mean that God takes the tangled skein of your life and weaves it into a pattern that is helpful and useful. I believe that takes faith. What are you doing to strengthen your own faith? Coming to worship here at North Lake, here in the sanctuary and online and by video, that will strengthen your faith. To listen and to pray, to hear the word of God read without input from God, your faith becomes nothing more than emotional. And there's nothing wrong with an emotional faith. But an emotional faith is not all that strong during the tough times of life. We need to have faith. Then sometime down the road up ahead, you'll be able to look back and see that God took those tough times, and honored it for you. Perhaps you have learned to thank God turning the bad of your past into good. 
I was 33 years old. I had just moved from Bradenton, Florida to Bartow, Florida to be my first senior pastor experience. Pastor Jeff and me and some of you, by playing sports, would have a team physical every year that took eight seconds. My church decided they would give me my first physical at the Watson Clinic in Lakeland, Florida. Mercy. A couple days after, I got a call from a urologist that asked me to come in, and he told me I had testicular cancer, and it was malignant. I'm 33 years old. I'm getting ready to start a career as a senior pastor, and I have cancer, and it's malignant, and I'm just starting a new job in another church. Mercy. So, I had surgery, I took treatment, and I got better. I have not had one problem since then. But even if I get a new bump, I'm thinking, oh, Lordy, here we go. But it didn't, this never happened. You see, in my ministry, having cancer has been nothing but a blessing. I have an immediate attachment to people who do. I pray for cancer people because I can't help myself. You see, what we look at as bad, God can redeem it. Be careful at calling things bad that God is calling good. In 1 Thessalonians, Paul says, the will of God is to give thanks in all circumstances. God is saying, give thanks in all things, for it is God's will for you, and God wants you to trust him. Out of sheer obedience, I do this, and I challenge you to do it. And then unexpected things will start to emerge. My experience of who God is has expanded. When I'm confused, I claim that God is never confused. And I cry to him to help me and clear things up. Occasionally, my life gets out of control. God is never out of control. So I ask him to come help me and get back on top of things. God is not stymied by situations that look impossible. God is not wringing his hands like I do when I am anxious because God is calm and on the throne. Like every good Presbyterian, I believe in a strong God. Now, I don't believe Methodists believe in a weak God, but I believe that when we describe our God, we describe a God that is so full of control that John Calvin called that predestination. My God knows everything that is going to happen to me before it happens, and he's on top of everything that I don't know about. But yet, he'll let me make my own decisions. Now, that's pretty special. I want God to be out in front, leading me in his way. God knows a secret. You're getting ready to know what it is. You and I could benefit from this secret. Others have. So why not you and why not me? Throw in your lot with God and Jesus Christ and enter the outer limits of thanksgiving. Would you pray with me? Lord, Thanksgiving Day is around the corner. 
Help us to be thankful. Our lives are penetrated by your guidance. Help us to thank you. People in our lives need to know that we love them and that we are thankful that they are in our lives. Lord, we ask you to humble our hearts before yours and accept the love that you give to us through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Before I pronounce the benediction, I would like to have a word with you who are worshiping in the sanctuary today, as well as those of you that are online and those that will watch this by video. I am terminating my position here at North Lake as interim associate pastor. Some of you know that I signed another year's contract to stay until you found a permanent associate pastor, but I am 
going through some health difficulties. And so I need to concentrate on my health. And so I want to tell you that I'll be here through the month of December. I want to tell you how much I love you. I love this congregation. I have been here with you because I love my pastor, Jeff Hosmer. And so I want to tell you this was a very difficult decision, but one that I have to make. And so I want you to pray for me. One of the things that I asked Jeff was that my wife, Pam, who is a member of North Lake, and I did not want to leave this church. We want to be a part of worship and supporting the ministry of this church. And so I want to thank you for all of your prayers. And I ask you, don't stop praying. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and in the life everlasting. Amen.